Hi, this is David. In the last video, I showed you how to use XUnit to test your methods. In this case, I'm testing this method right here. It's a simple method that adds two integers together and returns the sum of those integers. And we used this inline data attribute in combination with this theory attribute to run the same test three times, each time with a different set of inputs. Now there are some disadvantages to that. One of them is that you have to tightly couple all that data here into the test. It's not really separated out, um, which for simple things is probably not a disadvantage, but for complex things it can be. And the other is that we can only use primitive types. You can pass in numbers and strings here, but if I wanted to pass in an entire object as a parameter, there's no way to do that using this inline data attribute. So I'm going to talk about how to do that here to actually set up your data separately and then pass it in using an object. And the way that XUnit does that is we need to create a new class that contains just our data. So I'll add a class here, right here. I'll call it math functions test input data. How about that? All right. I'll make it public. And I want it to inherit from I enumerable of an array of objects. Like this. And because it's inheriting from this interface, I'll press control dot and I will implement that interface right here. I'll come back to that in a second. But what I also want is this object right here, which I've just pasted in. It's called data. It's a read-only property. And uh, it's simply a list of objects I'm sorry, a list of an array of objects. And here's that array. Object 1, object 2, and object 3, or more actually object 0, 1, and 2. Uh, and you can see that they're just an array of numbers here. 15, 30, and 45, negative 15, negative 30, and negative 45, negative 15, 30, and 15. And these correspond to our inputs that we did here, right here, because I, I want this to be Number one, input number one, this be input number two, and this to be the expected results. That's what I'm doing right here. So you'll structure yours any way you want, but it has to match what these parameters are right here. The data types and the number of parameters, and of course, what the meaning of those parameters are supposed to be. So you'll do that, and once you have that in your input data, now I can start to flesh out this thing. If I want to get uh, an enumerator that returns an array of objects, I will return this dot data dot get enumerator. And if I want to return just a single enumerator, I'll turn this dot get enumerator right here. Now I've got some data that I can pass in in the form of this. And the nice thing about this is these are just using primitive data types, but this could be an entire object with properties and maybe even sub-objects tacked onto it, things like that. So you can get very complex with this. Now I'll write my test, and my test will be in a new class that I'll call math functions test um, using inline data. No, I'm sorry, using uh, class data. Right here. So there we go. Make sure it's using the demo X unit because that's what I'm going to be testing and using X unit right here. That's got some things that are important. I'll make it public. And then I'll write a method that's very similar to this right here. I'll grab that whole thing and just copy and paste it. This method. But instead of using inline data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use class data, which is another X unit attribute. And in class data, I type in, or I pass in the type of my object, which was math functions test input data. That's the class that I just created a second ago. 
this right here. I'll pass that in because that's an array that contains three objects. Then those three objects should get passed in one at a time. It's, it's kind of three times three. So these three objects here represent the three parameters, whereas this list right here of these three, that represents three times I'm going to run the test. So if that made sense, and if I've typed everything correctly, again, I don't really need to do a range because I'm passing that in, but this is the same. I'll, I'll pass in, uh, I'll call the function itself, passing in the first number and the second number, and I'll expect that the result will be whatever was in here. So there it is. I should pass it in 15 and 30 and expect 45 is the output. Let's build that and then run all tests. Run all tests here in the Test Explorer. And now what we'll see is in my math function tests using right here, using class data. This is the new one that was picked up. There's my only one method in there. However, underneath that, three tests were run, and they were all passed. And what I can do is I can see if I actually debug this. It might make it a little bit easier to see. I'll set a breakpoint on this, and I'll just right-click inside of here and say debug that test alone. And let's see, the first time it is, it's passing in negative 15, negative 30, and negative 45. And I say the first time, so you can see that they're not really running in order, in this order right here. Press F5 to go it. Now it's running through the second time. That time I get negative 15, positive 30, and the expected result is 15. I run that. That passed. Now it's going through the third time, positive 15, positive 30, and positive 45 right here. And that's why all of these things ran. In this video, I have shown you how to parameterize an X unit test using class data and a class that contains all of that data. This is David. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.